Let's talk about the multiple choice questions of homework three. Okay, first, how do competitive firms and monopolists are different? So, um, okay, let's look at these choices one by one. Okay, so the first one is a competitive firm cannot choose its level of output. This is false. A competitive firm's short-term profit is always zero. This is false because we know that the long-term profit is zero. But the short-term profit can be positive. C, a competitive firm's marginal revenue curve is horizontal. A monopolist's marginal revenue curve is downward sloping. So here you can see that um, this one is right, right? If you look at the D, it says a competitive firm sets price equal to marginal cost. This part is correct, but then it says a monopolist sets price equal to marginal revenue. This is wrong because we know that for a monopolist at the profit maximizing quantity, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Okay, second, in monopolistically competitive markets, what does the property of free entry and exit suggest? Oh, this is easy, right? Because we know that um, when you're talking about free entry, then firms will earn zero profit in the long term. And this is true for both the competitive market and the monopolistically competitive market. So here we choose B. Okay, next. Okay, refer to the above table. As long as... Uh, Matthew and Anna operate as a profit maximizing maximizing monopoly. What will their weekly revenue equal? So we so here we have this price table, right? We have the quantities and we have the prices and of course revenues. And we also know that there is no cost. So basically, you can see that here revenue equals profit because of zero cost. And here our purpose is to maximize profit. This is equal to say we wanted to maximize revenue. Now the problem becomes very simple. We just pick the largest number, right? So you can see that the largest revenue is 360. So we choose D here. Okay, four. Um, so now we again have this table quantity and price. Now we assume that uh, there is only one cable TV firm in this market. So this is the monopoly case. What price will this firm charge for its subscription to maximize its profit? Um, so what we can do here is, you can see that the firm has a fixed cost of $100,000 and its marginal cost is always zero. So this basically means its variable cost is always zero. Then we can actually calculate this firm's profit at, at different quantities. So let's say we first calculate total revenue. And we get okay, this one is four eight. This one is five four. So this one is four eight. And then we can calculate its profit. So um its profit is basically the number minus the, the fixed cost. And this one should be and this one should be
So now you can see that what you want is um, this number, right? So your max, so your maximum profit is four hundred and forty thousand dollars, and we have the quantity and price, which is nine thousand quantity and sixty dollars. So here you should choose B. And one comment I want to make here is. You can see that the process is you would basically actually calculate the total profit. So you're not using marginal revenue equals marginal cost, right? This is the general. So the general rule, he, rule is in, in an actual problem, if you are given a table, if you are given numbers, and then the problem asks you, what is the maximized profit or at what quantity or at what price the profit can be maximized. What you would do is you would actually do the calculation. Just don't use MR equals MC. The reason is marginal revenue equals marginal cost can only be used if you have a continuum of quantities, right? Here you can see that you only have very few choices of quantities, right? You only have zero. You, you only have 3,000, 6,000, 9,000. You don't have 7,000. You don't have 8,000. That is, there are some missing quantities. There are some missing numbers in this problem. So you cannot use marginal revenue equals marginal cost to find out at what quantity, at what price the firm is maximizing its profit. Okay, now we look at the fifth. What is the consumer surplus under the social planner's outcome? Um, first, we know that this is the case for monopoly, right? And we know there is dead weight loss for a monopolist. And the socially optimum quantity should happen at when um, price equals the marginal cost, which is this point. So this basically means the price under the social planner's outcome should be 15. Right? And we are looking at this triangle here. But then the test bank made a mistake. It forgets to tell us what is this number. Right? So how do you solve this? Well, you need some um, ge geometry trick from high school. So what you would do is you will compare different lines. So let me mark these points with letters. And what you can see here is the line DC divided by DE equals the line AB divided by BE. And then we have um, then we have have DC which is 5 and we have DE which is 50 and we have BE which is 150. So now you can find out AB would be I suppose it's 15. So you can see that uh, you can see that the length of this thing is 15, which means the area of this triangle would be 1 over 2 uh, times its base, which is 150, times its height, which is 15. So this gives you 1125. So you should choose B here. Um, so the comment here is, in the final exam, I will not ask you about these mathematical tricks. If there's a problem like this, I will directly tell you this number is 30, right? because uh, this is the economics course. We're not doing uh, high school geometry uh, tests. Okay, six. 
So here we have a bank. Um, it offers two products, a checking account and ATM card service. And there are two people. For the first person, he is willing to pay $8 for, uh, for the checking account and $2 for the ATM card. And the second customer is happy to pay uh, $5 for the checking account, but, he's, but she is willing to pay $9 for ATM card. And now the bank has to think about a pricing strategy to maximize its profit. And here we assume there is zero cost. So maximizing profit equals maximizing revenue. And what you can see here is, um, of course, this is a tying example, right? So the bank wants to tie these products together to maximize its profit. So if the bank ties the two, the two products together, it can either charge $10. So this is based on the first customer's willingness to pay. Or it could charge nine plus five, $14. This is based on the second customer's willingness to pay. And what you can see here is, um, if the firm decides to go with 14, then the first customer will not make the purchase. So the total revenue of the firm will be only 14. But if the firm decides to uh, price the tied product at $10, then both customers will be happy to make the purchase. So now the firm's revenue is $20. Thus, in this case, the maximize the profit maximizing uh, price to charge for the tight good would be $10. Okay, seven. Um, so the seventh problem says there is a new hotel opening. And then the question is, uh, existing hotels, motels, and lodging facilities are likely to experience what kind of externality as a result of the new resort. So first, we're talking about the monopolistic competition here, and we discussed two kinds of externalities if there is new entry uh, into the market. The first is positive, and this is the uh, product variety externality, which means if new firm enters into the market, then consumers have more choices. And the second is business stealing. It basically means if new firm enters into the market, then it steals business from other firms. This will affect other firms in a negative way. So you can see that here we should choose business stealing because, it, because this new resort affects other hotels, motels. What does a firm that shuts down temporary Temporary, temporarily still have to pay. This is easy. It will have to pay the fixed cost. Okay. Um, ninth problem is about this game theory example. So assume the trade negotiators meet to discuss trade policy between Canada and Mexico. If neither party to the negotiation is able to trust the other party, and how they will choose their strategies. So this is a very typical um, prisoner's dilemma um, game. What we have learned from the lecture is, in this type of game, each party will just play their dominant strategy. So you could just choose D here. And of course, based on these numbers, you can verify this yourself. For example, if Mexico decides to use high tariff then Canada will choose high tariff over then Canada will choose high tariff over low tariff because 65 is larger than 35. And you can also verify that if Mexico chooses low tariff, then if Canada chooses high, then it's 140. If it chooses low tariff, it's 130, which means 
Again, Canada will prefer to choose high tariffs. So this implies that no matter、um, whether Mexico chooses high tariff or low tariff, Canada will always choose high tariff. And you can apply the same logic, and you can find out no matter whether Canada chooses high tariff or low tariff, Mexico will will always choose high tariff. So in this case, you can see that choosing high tariff is the dominant strategy for both countries. And in the actual game, they play this; they will always choose high tariff. Okay, tenth.、Um, so tenth tenth problem says. Assume the trade negotiations are repeated each year. So, in a repeated game scenario, what would the main difference of the game? And we talk about this in our lecture, right? We discussed the repeated prisoners dilemma, and we said,、um, under certain cases, that is, if these players they value futures enough, right? They think futures are important, then they will. Actually, coordinate with each other. They will not predict this、um, this inefficient、um, dominant strategy. So, for number ten, you should choose. Okay, let me see. You should choose B here. That is, because it's a repeated relationship. Then. Both parties will have incentives to cooperate with each other, so they will choose this strategy, which、um, optimizes the total value of the trade. Which means, in this long-term repeated relationship, they will play low tariff. Okay, eleventh. When a natural monopoly exists, how cost-effective is it to produce the output? So what we learned about in the class is, if the、um, the average total cost is always decreasing, then it means this is the case for natural monopoly, because let's say if this is a case of,、uh, let's say the quantity here is one one hundred, then if you Just have one firm, then the cost here, let's say, it's one dollar per unit. But if you have two firms, let's assume the two firms they divide the market equally, and in this case, each of them will produce fifty. Now let's say the average total cost is obviously higher. So let's say it's. Three dollars, right? So what I can see here is, in the case of natural monopoly, if you let more firms to do the production, then the average total cost will actually be higher. So you should choose D here, right? It's not cost effective for two or more private firms to produce this product. Case twelfth.、Uh, Refer to the above picture. What line segment best reflects? The long run supply curve for this firm.、Uh, we know that in the long run, the firm will only supply if price larger than ATC, right? And for the short term, the price the the firm will only supply if price is larger than average variable cost, which means、um, in the long run case, we're looking at this line segment. So it's D E here. We should choose D. Okay, thirteen. What are the relationship between price and quantity of a competitive firm? Um, so B is obviously correct because total revenue always equals price、uh, times quantity. Personally, I think you can also choose D because um, the 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 quantity of the Product product the firm wants to produce depends on the price of the product. So why there are two answers? Well, I guess again it's because the test bank, ah,、uh, sometimes messes things up. So okay, ah,、uh, fourteen. 
in that particular market, there are 500 firms. Each firm has a marginal cost of 40 when it produces 200 units of output. What is one point on the market supply curve? So this one, this problem tests you on the relationship between a single firm's supply curve and the market supply curve. So this is the single firm's supply curve. It says that if price is 40, then quantity is 200, right? Well, because we know that for a competitive firm, price equals marginal cost. So if marginal cost is 40, then we know price is 40. And then we understand there are 500 firms, which means if price is 40, then the total quantity would be each firm's quantity times the number of firms. I guess this would be, um, I don't know, one, 100,000, right? So you should choose, you should choose C here. Okay, 15. What about the entry of new firms into a competitive market to supply and market prices? Well, this is simple. We know that if firm enters into the market, there are more firms in the market, which means the supply curve will move to the right. So what you will see is quantity will be larger, price will be lower. And we should choose B here. Okay, 16. If a profit maximizing monopolist that faces a downward sloping demand curve, what do we know? So we know that if demand curve looks like this, marginal revenue looks like this, which means here you should choose D here, right? Marginal revenue is always lower than the price of the product. This is true because marginal revenue curve lies below the demand curve. 17, which of the following expressions calculates the profit of the of a profit maximizing firm? Okay, this one should be um, easy. So we know that profit equals total revenue minus total cost. And total revenue equals price times quantity minus um, average total cost times quantity, which is price minus average total cost times quantity. So you should choose A here. There are two types of markets in which firms face some competition, but they still have some control over the prices of their products. What are the names? Oh, this is easy, right? It's monopolistic competition and oligopoly. So if you think if you think about the other two types, competitive market, well in the competitive market, firms they have zero control over the prices of their products. They're completely price takers. Then if you think about um mon the monopolist, well you can see that uh monopolist that can control the price of their product, but they have zero control over the, sorry, monopolists that can control the price of their product, but they does not face any competition because they are the only firm in the market. Okay, 19th, uh, shrimp galore, a shrimp business in BC has a loan and the annual loan payment is $25,000. And the boat, okay, let's look at the next number. Um, okay, so this business would have a net loss of $75,000 after paying all 2013 expenses. So basically this is a uh, decision whether this business needs to shut down. So if the business does not shut down, the business needs to lose $75,000. And if the business decides to shut down, it will only need to pay this fixed cost. Here, the fixed cost is this loan payment, right? So the, 
the loan payment is $25,000, which means if the business shuts down, its loss will be lowered to $25,000 compared with $75,000 if it decides to operate. So here we should choose the business should produce nothing and experience a loss of $25,000. So we choose A here. Okay. Okay, 20. Why is curve A U-shaped? Okay, first you need to know what is curve A, right? Uh, so curve, curve A is marginal cost, curve B is average total cost, curve C is average variable cost, and curve D is average fixed cost. Right? And generally we say marginal cost increases. But we also talked about a special case that in the beginning, when the business started to expand, that it could potentially experience this nice result that is decreasing marginal cost, right? There are many reasons. One reason you can think about is the uh, increased specialization as your business expands, as you produce more. And um, so here we are getting this decrease in marginal cost, right? We're, oops, we're having We are having decreasing marginal cost in this little section. And the economic reason is because there is increased specialization as you as you produce more. But then if you look at this these choices, well, you're not getting this answer. And if you compare these different choices, uh let's see which one. Okay, we should choose D here because we learned about this in, in our lecture. That is, if marginal cost increases, this is equivalent to say marginal product decreases. This is easy to understand, right? Because decrease in marginal product is roughly saying that you're becoming more and more inefficient in your production. And because you are becoming more inefficient, of course, the marginal cost will increase. And of course, if marginal cost decreases, this is equivalent to say marginal product increases. Okay, 21, refer to the above figure. What does the changing slope of the total cost curve um, reflect? So what you can see here is the slope actually becomes larger or you could say the slope becomes steeper as the quantity of output increases. And we know that the slope of the total cost is marginal cost. So this picture tells us marginal cost increases as quantity increases. Then why do we get this result? Well, you can see that it's easy. You should use C here because of decreasing marginal product. Okay, 22. What do we know about fixed costs? Um, okay, let's see. Uh, A says the very, well, they never changes. They stay fixed. So the very, no, they stay fixed. They are incurred only when production is at capacity. This is not true. Um, there is fixed cost even if there is zero production. Okay, we should D here. So they're incurred even if nothing is produced. 23. When is average total cost increasing? So you can borrow this picture, right? You can see that here, average total cost is increasing whenever marginal cost is larger than average total cost, right? Because here, marginal cost is larger than the average total cost. So you should choose um, D here. 
Okay, 24. Which cost could be regarded as an implicit cost? We discussed in this class, um, a cost is considered to be implicit if you're not seeing this actual money flow or cash flow, right? So um, you can see that the choice here should be B, the opportunity cost of the financial capital that has been invested in the business. So basically, if you invest $100 million into your business, you have to forego this interest you can earn on that $100 million, right? So this foregone interest is the opportunity cost, is the implicit cost. Okay, 25. Which of the following explains the relationship among different cost functions? Okay, let's um, look through these choices one by one. A, the marginal cost of the fifth unit of output equals the total fixed cost of five unit minus the total fixed cost of fourth unit. Well, this is surely not true because um, total cost, because total fixed cost is fixed. So if you use the total fixed cost of five units minus the total fixed cost of four units, then you will get zero. Okay, B says the total variable cost of seven units uh, equals the average variable cost of seven units divided by seven. Well, this is false because the correct statement should be the average variable cost equals total variable cost divided by seven. Okay, C, the average total cost of seven units equals the average total, the average variable cost minus the average fixed cost. Well, this is true, I'm sorry. This is uh, incorrect because the correct statement is the average total cost equals the average variable cost plus the average fixed cost. So in the end, the correct choice should be D. The marginal cost of the fifth unit equals the total cost of the fifth, uh, of five units minus the total variable cost of four units. Well, if you think about marginal cost, right? So it's, if you go from fourth unit to, to fifth unit, then the total cost of five units minus the total cost of four units. That's the, like, the most basic definition. Then we know that, um, Total cost can be decomposed into the total variable cost of five units plus the fixed cost minus the total variable cost of the fourth units minus fixed cost. Of course, four minus, uh, of course, five minus four is just one. So this is just the one. And you can see that fixed cost they will just cancel out. They will offset each other. And this equals variable cost of five units minus variable cost of four units. So you should choose D here.